I'm here to tell you something that you don't already know about aging. And my nugget of knowledge is centered around the toilet. <laughs> Specifically, the importance of using emerging technology like the Internet of Things to monitor an elder's toileting behaviors. And before I dive into my obsession with toileting, let me tell you how I got there. Every room in the home has unique data that tells the story of an elder's daily life. These are the patterns for when you sleep, when you eat, when you bathe, how you stay connected to friends and family, and your toileting behaviors. We can capture the patterns of daily living through inexpensive hardware store sensors. I'm not opposed to more sophisticated clinical sensors, but it's a little bit overkill for what we're trying to accomplish. My grandmother used to say, it's like taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. These inexpensive hardware store sensors, like this motion sensor, gives you a signal of on or off. The signal signifies if motion was detected from the heat of your body. It is not a clinical sensor, yet the information it provides is really valuable in the context of healthy aging. The, the beauty is that this sensor, it's not this one sensor actually, that is the power of observation. It's really the analysis of aggregation of all the sensor readings in the home. So let's talk about the power of observation. Through the power of observation, you can observe someone's routines and behaviors. If you were standing in the kitchen and watching a person observing them and you saw them open up the refrigerator, open and close the cabinets, light the stove, turn on the faucet, move around the space, what would you conclude? Well, you would conclude that they're cooking or preparing a meal. Through these sensors, I can gather data. I can know when the refrigerator door opened. The power surge will tell me that the microwave is in use. Carbon monoxide levels rising would give me the indication that the gas stove was turned on. The insights that I'm collecting, I can feed through algorithms and I can make observations and conclusions about a person's daily life remotely from my Austin, Texas, my office in Austin, Texas. And this is really interesting because this information, if I'm successful, then care providers and family can also remotely monitor an elder from afar and keep them safe. And that's what I do at IBM. I select the sensors, you know, I evaluate them, I figure out where to place them, I analyze the data, I correlate the sensor readings, I look for what is a normal pattern and then determine what is not normal. So we all know that the world is aging at historic rates. The aging of society is a ticking time bomb for the healthcare industry. Nearly 40% of older adults will acquire a disability. It's a rite of passage. And many have chronic physical and mental diseases that need to be monitored and cared for. Yet there is a serious shortage of care providers to go around. This is where I think technology can really be helpful. The connection, all these Internet of Things, all these devices connected can tell a family member, tell a doctor, can have a care provider proactively monitor the health and well-being of the world's aging population. And senior care providers are really interested in this technology. They want to leverage and find new insights that will help them reduce risk, help them reduce the cost of care, and dramatically improve the quality of life of the residents. So research shows us there's six ADLs, activities of daily living, that would help determine how well someone is managing aging in place and what's the right level of care. These six are mobility, cooking, sleeping, bathing, dressing, and, are you ready? My favorite, toileting. So often technology is focused on mobility, and for good reason. 
In the US, every 11 seconds, an elder is treated in the emergency room due to injuries caused by falling at a cost of $31 billion. Yet, I think toileting is just as important. It's fundamental to survival. It's a key indicator of a person's health. And let me share with you some stats that will kind of validate why I think toileting is so fascinating. Um, when you're 80 years old, you have 15% less water in your body than when you're 20. It's due to a decrease in taste buds and you lose the sensation of being thirsty. If you're not thirsty, you're not drinking. If you're not drinking, you get dehydrated. $1.1 billion is spent in annual hospitalization of elders due to preventable dehydration. It's actually one of the five costliest health conditions at a cost of $1,000 per episode. And if you're dehydrated, we know that's linked to urinary tract infections, UTIs. And if you're over 70, a UTI is a common cause of mortality. Through understanding an elder's toileting behavior, we can help them follow simple doctor recommendations of toileting every two to three hours and bathing once a day. That would dramatically reduce the risk of having a UTI. So in theory, we know that the remote monitoring using non-intrusive sensors to detect activities of daily living is a viable and important area of research, but in practice, it's kind of challenging to pull off. There's a lot of interesting challenges like the network. If the sensors lose connectivity to the network, you're not getting those signals that you need. Battery life, maintenance of the sensors, even for certain sensors, finding the right adhesive to keep it where it needs to be to capture the data that you're looking for. Luckily, we're working with some great care providers. Actually, one of them is Avamir in Oregon. And we are working through a lot of these practical issues through real world deployments. So now I'm gonna tell you about how to detect toileting with this inexpensive sensor. We started with flush sensors. We also attached accelerometers to the toilet. We even looked at really expensive toilet seats. I have some fun facts for you. Not everyone sits when they toilet. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Not everyone flushes. So if you put a flush sensor on a toilet to capture the activity of toileting, you're not gonna capture it, they didn't flush. So we started to look at these motion sensors, but the problem with motion sensors, you end up getting just activity in the bathroom. It's not specific. And then we thought, well, what if we put the motion sensor on the ceiling? But again, by default, off the shelf, it has a 10 to 15 to 20 foot range of detection. I'm just getting activity, not specific. So I spent many hours climbing up and down, up and down a ladder, taping off the fractal, the eyelet fractals of this sensor till I got a perfect three by, not perfect, but really close three by three foot range detection of the toilet. And surprisingly, it's, it's proven to be pretty incredible. Like, I'm really happy with the results. This $20 sensor is able to give me the activities of toileting. And when I collect all this data, I know the number of times per hour, per day, per week, per month. I can look at the differences between the weekends and the weekdays. I can look at the duration, the interval between events. And with duration and intervals, we got the range of averages of maximum and minimums. I can see the pattern form over time. I can learn what is normal and detect anomalies. So an anomaly might be if for a couple of days in the middle of the night, an elder is frequent in the toileting. I can let someone know. And that could be what is needed to prevent the ongoing case of a urinary tract infection. So it, it's not just about detecting UTIs and dehydration. It's making the connection between behaviors and the increased risk of an affliction. Predictive analytics and artificial intelligence intelligence can enable us to do this early detection that could prevent an elder from visiting the ER or a stay at a costly or post-acute care. What is really fascinating is these sensors are all around us. When you go to the airport, you're probably gonna use one in the bathroom. It's gonna turn on your faucet. 
The difference is we're putting these sensors in the home. We're collecting, we're storing, we're analyzing these sensor readings. We're building a model of an individual's daily activities. And when you see what we can model with all of these sensor readings, you begin to understand the power of this data. And when you're curating the information, the next question always turns to privacy and security. And my research really does beg the question, how much information does an elder want to share and with whom? So we, me as a researcher and you in the audience, we can begin to really start to look how to frame this offering so that the elder, the care provider, and the healthcare industry can see the value and the benefit of embracing this technology. We are not all gonna age the same. Based on your genetics, based on your environmental factors, based on your personal outlook on life. Using emerging technology like the Internet of Things, we can begin to understand the individual and build out a very personalized solution that will help an elder thrive in place. I look forward to working with all of you to make this a reality.